my presentation? Yes, we can. Oh, great. Great. Okay. Take it away. So, uh, okay, uh, I'd like to talk to you about our project on lung encoding RNAs in mammalian brain development and actually about the networks between lung encoding RNAs and transcription factors in uh, neural stem cells. This project is being conducted in the uh, Biomedical Research Foundation, Academy of Athens here, and is being funded by a European program, NSRF. So um, we already know that neural differentiation is controlled by gene regulation networks and also extracellular cues, but we don't know exactly which is the me molecular mechanism or mechanisms that mediate these actions, and specifically the neural stem cell expansion, neurogenesis, and gliogenesis. For many years, it was thought that these networks are mainly based on uh, cross-regulatory interactions between transcription factor genes, between transcription factors, between proteins. But, okay, this is not what we actually know today. So I think that the debate uh, whether the non-coding genome is uh, just junk or is a critical regulation, regulator is still going on. <laughs> uh, even though the ENCODE data and many other data have uh, completely changed the way we, we see and we study the organization, the activity and the regulation of the mammalian genome. genome. For instance, more than 70% of the human genome is transcribed, but only a very small percentage of it is being translated into proteins. In the neural tissue, more than 10,000 of lung encoding RNAs are expressed in the brain in a highly regional and temporal manner. And this is almost the way we, we started our project. We first uh, did a screening for lung encoding exp expression in mouse developing cortex, which is our favorite system. And actually we found a plethora of lung encoding RNAs being expressed uh, during development. But then, Based on the literature at the time, we wanted to identify pairs of lung encoding RNAs that are expressed during brain development, but also that they are located next to genes encoding for transcription factors with well-established and important roles in neural development. And we uh, came up with a list of such pairs and we selected uh, the most interesting uh, to uh, move a step forward. So this is an example. We did a lot of such uh, screenings. And um, uh, you can see here uh, the expression profile during development. And at the top, you can see the locus. So one of the first things that we have observed is that the, most of them, most of the lung encoding RNAs are following the expression pattern of the neighboring transcription factor gene. Um, we also did some in situ hybridization experiments to, to, to study to see where these lung encoding RNAs are expressed in the cortex. And especially for Ariel, which is our first lung encoding RNA, and we are actually now preparing our first publication about it. Well, the main, the key point is that we, uh, we, we saw that it is both necessary and sufficient for proper differentiation of neural stem cells in terms of neurogenesis and uh, gliogenesis but also that it, it antagonizes PROX1, which is the neighboring transcription factor gene. So uh, what we suggest in our paper that I hope you will read soon, is that the, the Ariel PROX1 uh, locus may act as a molecular switch between gliogenesis and neurogenesis. 
pretty much the same we saw with lacuna another lung encoding RNA which is located next to TBR2 we saw that its overexpression reduces neurogenesis and we also developed a more sophisticated technique to knock down uh, these uh, lung encoding RNAs, the CRISPR dead Cas9 CRAB effector system, as we saw that the SH RNAs are not working very well with uh, lung encoding RNAs. So, with this technique, we saw that lacuna is necessary for TBR2 expression in neural stem cells. And I remind you that we have seen with Ariel that it, it antagonizes its uh, neighboring transcription factor gene. So now we are performing some in vivo experiments with uh, in utero extrapolation. Uh, we already did this with Ariel, so we are doing this with some new lung encoding RNAs. And I hope we will have some very interesting data soon. Um, we are using the in vivo techniques because we are focused on developmental uh, events, so I think this is the best way to do it. Um, this is pretty much what we are doing about lung encoding RNAs and during brain development. I would like to, to thank you <laughs> for attending, and also I'd like to thank my supervisor, Dr. Parangas Folidis, who came up with the whole idea, and Artemis Mikhail, this beautiful young lady who is working with uh, with me right now on this project. Also Vaselina Faradzu, who is um, a very young scientist uh, entering the field now. Uh, our former lab members, there are many people that have worked on this project and our valuable collaborators abro abroad and also in Athens. Thank you, Alpeniki. Nice presentation. Now we'll open it up for discussion, interactions um, with our attendees, our panelists. Um, please don't be shy, turn on your cameras, ask a question. I do have a question, very nice presentation. I was wondering if you, I don't know if I missed it, but do you know what all these uh, large population of these long non-coding RNAs are doing? Are they becoming circular RNAs? Are they embedding themselves into um, like the DNA, what are they doing? And are they also um, activated by the same transcription factor as the gene that's downstream of them? Mm -hmm. Well, um, actually, everything is happening. <laughs> I mean, uh, we have seen that uh, they are getting very peculiar forms. For example, I could show you Ariel that we know how it looks like like this, like a T, to me it seems like a tRNA, but, but, but it's not mm. it's bigger. So we know that they interact with uh, DNA, um, often uh, blocking uh, the expression of, uh, of the gene. Uh, they interact with proteins as well. Uh, Actually, anything can happen. It is uh, still a little bit difficult to to do crystallography and stuff to see the the form. But uh, yeah, with with the the way we do it, with overexpression experiments and knockdown, uh, we see that they interact mainly with uh, proteins. See, and then another quick question: um, Do you know if um, when you're always looking at these different, if you see this, these RNA, um, non-coding RNAs, have you ever seen in situ or done any live imaging of the RNA and see it move between or change its expression pattern between neuronal cells versus non-neuronal cells or neuronal throughout the neuron? Well, yes, we, we usually refer to check whether this is uh, located inside the nucleus or the cytoplasm. And we can see some differences there during development. There are some, exam some examples of these. Of course, there are non-neuronal uh, populations like uh, astrocytes that express lung encoding RNAs. Um, yeah. <laughs> 
let's see. Ah, in situ hybridizations, uh, usually it's a little bit tough to, to have a good image. Uh, well, we have tried with men lung coding RNAs, and I think that only two or three are <laughs> okay. Um, and also the live imaging with uh, fluorescent in situ hybridizations and stuff, it is a bit leaky. I don't know what if this is because of the peculiar structure of the lung coding RNA or just our hands. I don't know. Uh, do you mind uh, going back to your um, IUE slide? I think you got just missed. Uh, oh, sorry, the ah, immediate. Uh, yes, mm -hmm. yes, yes, yes. Yeah. yeah. And could you remind me um, what experiment you guys are trying to do here? Well, what we actually do is that we we have a mother mouse here. She's pregnant. This is the uterus. So uh, we inject uh, plasmids for overexpression or knockdown, depends, inside the, the, the embryonic brain, inside the ventricle. And then with uh, electrodes, we, uh, we pull the DNA to, towards the cortex. So what we see here in this image is just a GFP uh, signal inside the, the cortex. And when we slice them and we go to uh, confocal microscopy and stuff, we see that the GFP neurons that, well, neurons that have incorporated GFP and they are migrating and stuff. So this is how we, we check up on neurons and other populations that have overexpressed or knocked down the lung coding RNA of choice. I see. Um, yeah, I was curious because I uh, there's some people in my lab who do uh, endural electroporation, and they um, they're very particular about the specific time that they do it. Given that you know the different cortical layers are born at different times and different brain regions too, um, is there a, a yeah? Have you thought about trying different times for doing that? Well, uh, there is a limitation here. Um, at least in, in, in our lab at the time. I mean, we, we haven't managed to do this in a, in a, in a stage. Uh, at, I mean, we tried to do it at 13.5, but this didn't work. So 14.5 uh, is the, the smallest uh, embryo that we have managed to do it. And we are happy with this because uh, it's just a little bit before neurogenesis. So we are okay. Uh, at some, um, at some, with some lung coding RNAs that we have seen that they are not affecting so much neurogenesis, uh, but they are affecting as, uh, gliogenesis, we can go one day later, which is better. I mean, you have less uh, dead embryos because of the technique. So yeah, we can do it at 15.5 and then check what ha what's happening at 17.5 or later. We have also managed to, to get some embryos at P0 and P1, P2, they are alive after electroporation, which is a good thing. Uh, but yes, I think that this is the main problem. At least in our hands, we cannot do it in a, in a smaller embryo. Yeah, that sounds very similar to what I hear in our lab. When they try to go earlier than like E14 or E13, they have very few surviving pups. Yeah, yeah. this is why we tried to, we, yeah, we actually did it. It is a little bit uh, difficult, but okay, if you do electroporations in vivo, maybe you can try this. Uh, organotypic cultures, you do the electroporation outside the uterus, and uh, then you slice and you culture slices of the cortex. And it goes fine. I mean, okay, it's fine. It is a little bit delayed uh, in comparison to the normal development, but okay, I think that you can manage to, to get some data. Great, thank you, Elkaniki. We'll thank move you. on to our...